Hi, in this video, I'm going to go over how to deploy Laravel to a shared cPanel server. And the reason for this, I've seen, um, recently I've seen quite a few questions from, from various people in various groups that I'm in, uh, asking how to deploy Laravel onto, uh, well, to cPanel really, on a shared server. So I'm going to go through those steps. Um, a word of warning there, you do need SSH access to follow along with the steps that I'm going to go through. So I've got this um I've got this Laravel application, uh, it's just it's a, a quite a simple application that I, that I released yesterday. Uh, so I'm going to go through the motions of actually deploying this onto our server. So I've set up a, a new domain, or oh, it's a domain I've not been using. So I've got this test site that's already been mapped to cPanel. So I've just got an empty directory on there, and we've got our, our cPanel ready to go. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is I want to connect to the server. And to do that, we'll say SSH, and then we put in the username. So in my case, this is DC host, uh, and then it's the, the domain name, so DC host dot uh, dev. Uh, but in your case, that might be the IP address, or it might be, you know, will definitely will be a different domain to this. And then we put in the port number, uh, and then we need to put in the password to actually log in. So that, that brings us into the account. So if I do ls to look at the files that's in this the server i can see there's a public html folder and the public html folder we don't want we definitely do not want to deploy laravel into that folder because it would mean things like your env file would be publicly available and um, your vendor files or everything that's in your all the sensor files would be available and it's a really bad idea to put them inside the public html folder so definitely don't do that so instead, what I like to do is install Laravel into a folder above the document root, so above public HTML, delete the public HTML for, for completely. So I'm just going to do that now. So I'm going to set RM and I'm going to do hyphen RF. Uh, be careful with this command. If you're not familiar with it, it's basically it means recursively and force uh, the delete. Um, so in this case, I'm going to say public HTML. Um, basically, it will confirm as I saw just then, and it will actually go ahead and just delete whatever you tell it to. So you've got to be really careful with that command. Uh, so now I can see that there is no public HTML folder there. So once I've actually installed Laravel, I'll be mapping the Laravel's public folder, and I'll be sim what's called sim linking it with the public HTML folder. So it will kind of virtually exist. Uh, so I'll, I'll go through the, those motions. All right. So if we come to Go to back to our project and we'll copy the SSH connection details. And I will try to deploy it. This is going to fail straight away, which I'll go for the motions anyway. So I want to put it into a folder called Laravel and I'll go for the motions and it tells me that Uh, do that because just make sure they're the right path. Yeah, so we'll do that because we, we don't have access to it, which is fine. So what we need to do is, well, there's two ways about it now. You can either deploy using HTTPS, which means you have to log in every time you make a change, which I don't recommend. So, or instead you can generate an SSH key on your server, add it to your deploy key on GitHub, and the, that way can, the two can communicate. So that's what I'll do. So all I need to do on the server is type ssh keygen. If I can spell it correctly, that is. So it's asking me some options. I'm just going to go with the defaults because I'm happy to have it in the default path. I don't want a passphrase, passphrase rather. So this is the actual path where it's put the public key because we want the public, not the private. So if I just say cat and paste in that path, the actual correct path, then it gives me the full public key. Happy for you to see that because I'll be deleting that once I've finished this video. So now what I need to do is go into my settings and go to deploy keys and add a new deploy key. So I'm just going to call it server, paste in the key, doesn't need read access. Uh, right access, I'm going to leave that unticked and then click add key. So that's now been added. So now if I come back to the server, I'm just going to clear this out. And if I run, try to run that command again, this time it's authenticated so it actually runs. 
Uh, so now if I do ls, I can see I've got a Laravel folder. Now if I cd into Laravel, and do ls again, I can see the content of Laravel. So we are up and running in that sense. So I'm just going to go back to the root. So what I'm going to do now is symbling the public folder with the actual document root. And to do that, we'll say ln hyphen s, and then I just need to give it the path. So Laravel public. And then I need to give it the actual public HTML directory. And that's that's created that symbolic link. So now if I cd into public HTML and do ls, it actually shows me the contents of the Laravel public folder. So that's quite convenient. So again, I'm going to go back to the root. When you install with cPanel, the file permissions nearly always are wrong. So you always have to go through these extra steps. Uh, to add them. So all I'm going to do is do change mod, which is like change the actual file permissions. I'm going to say 775 on the Laravel directory. And I'm going to do the same for Laravel public. And also on the storage directory as well. And uh, now I need to, I, I want to actually change the file permissions for the index file. So I'm going to say Laravel index.php. course I need to give it public yeah, we've got, now we've got the, the correct place in there okay so now we've, we've gone that through so I'm going to cd into Laravel and I'll do a composer install to actually install the project so that's now now installed so the next thing I need to do is I need to generate the env file so I've, I have got can't quite see on here. It doesn't show up. Basically, I've I have got an env example file. So if I do it on in cPanel and make it make it more obvious. So if I go into the file manager and go into Laravel, and here we've got this .env .example. And if you don't see these, make sure in your settings you've got ticked show hidden files, or you will see anything that starts with a dot. So we have got this env example, so we can copy that. Uh, so that's what I'm, what I'm going to do now. So in the root of the Laravel folder, I'm going to say cp for copy dot env dot example to dot env. So that's, that's now been generated. And I, I will also need my, the, an actual key. So I'll say php artisan generate Key. I can never remember if this is the right way around or not. I always get the wrong way around. Key generate. So that's now being generated. Okay, so now if we go to our project and we'll see what state it's in. And now our project actually loads up. So it has, has deployed. So it means now we can make any changes on you know, locally, push up to GitHub, and then we can come back to here anytime and do um, a git pull to kind of pull down. I'll see if I do a git pull at the moment. I think it's going to happen. Um, basically, it says it's already up to date. So if I just try doing that again, I must have like to give me these, these messages because it's brand new. I've not actually set up the, the git config stuff with it. Uh, but basically, it's up to date. It's not actually going to pull down. Um, so, one thing I haven't done is I haven't actually connected this to a database. So, I can't actually use the application yet. So what I want to do is go into uh, MySQL. So in MySQL, I've already got a database, but let's just pretend that I haven't. So I am going to just delete all of these, uh, just so we can start from, from the beginning. Okay, so the fact that I want to do is I want, I want to to database I'm going to call the database app and then I'm going to create a user or user called demo for lack of a better name and I'm just going to generate a new key get one they're happy with and then click on use password and then click create user so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back into I'm going to edit using Vim to edit the .env file.
So I want to press I to go into edit mode. And it's a password I've copied. So I'm going to paste that, that in and then come back. Uh, so now I've created the database and the user, I just need to map the two together. So I'll go to section, because I've already selected, I can just click on add, give it the default privileges. So while we're here, I'm just going to create, add in the database name. And then also the username. I'm going to press escape and then I can then press colon right w and quit to write and quit the file. So that's now actually been saved. So I can save these changes and we should be ready to deploy uh, ready to migrate our database now. So if I do php artisan migrate, then it tells me it can't find the driver, uh, and that's probably because it hasn't got the driver enabled on my cPanel. Again, it's another common thing. So if I set for PHP versions, so I'm using PHP 8, and generally used on early versions, you will, you will have uh, Wikipedia underscore MySQL. There isn't one on here, but instead we've got this MDpedia MySQL. Uh, so I'll take that one. I'll save the changes, so then I'll save. So if I come back and just run the command again, now then now it's actually been connected and it's created the databases tables. So then I can go to my application and I can hit register. Uh, so I can put in so my name, email, put in credentials. And we're in our application, so we are up and running very easily. Uh, so that's basically been the, the run through of connecting to your database. Uh, one last thing I do want to touch on is if I just come back up here and just log out, click this out. So if I do my SSH connection again, it's going to ask me for my password every time, and it kind of gets, gets tedious doing that. So. Instead, it'd be really nice if it didn't ask for a password and it just let me in because it knew I was authenticated on this device. And I can do that by adding an SSH key. So in cPanel, if we just search for SSH and then access, and we want to manage access and we want to import a new key. So then the ones I did earlier, so I'm going to delete that just to make sure we're starting from fresh. Okay, so I want to import an SSH key, and then on my Mac, what I want to do is get my SSH key, which you can get from your SSH folder, your ID, RSA, pub. So I'm going to copy this key, come back. I'm, again, I want to generate this key afterwards after, after I finish this video, so there's no worries about security. So I'm not going to give it a nail, so I'm happy with the default, so obviously I'm going to leave and click on import. So that's been, that's gone in, but it's not been authorized yet. So to authorize it, you need to click on manage and then authorize. So only once it's authorized, can you actually log in without your password? So now if I clear this out again, and now if I try an SSH in now, it takes me straight to it where I'm having to put my password in every time. So that's a much better way of doing it. Generally, I think it's recommended for, for password to logins as much as possible. Um, yeah, so that was, about, was, was kind of, was quite a real world case scenario of getting an application and having it installed onto your cPanel.